Hi friends, welcome to this session. In this session we are going to discuss on different network naming schemes available on Red Hat or CentOS 7. In release 7 of Linux, uh, we got uh, 5 different naming schemes. Scheme 1 through 4, they are predictable naming scheme. Predictable mean by checking interface name, you can tell, yep, this is the interface, this is coming from this PCI slot, this is, this is coming from this particular Mac or uh, this particular slot. And traditional naming scheme, that is scheme 5, we will get uh, normal interface name, which are it 0, it 1, it 2, it 3, so on. So, in scheme 1, that is uh, BIOS or firmware provided name. Scheme 2, they are still BIOS and firmware provided name, but they got PCI Express Hot Plug Slot Index numbers. Scheme 3, interface are named to physical location of connector of hardware. And in scheme 4, uh, they are based on interface MAC address. They are predictable. In scheme 5, they are simply it 0, it 1. 2, 3, so on. So, one thing uh, I want to discuss on which scenarios we can use traditional naming scheme. Friends, uh, I want to uh, make it clear that is my assumption and uh, things may be different at uh, your end or scenario to scenario. So, what I think when you are using uh, or doing kickstart build, you want to use traditional naming scheme that is easy because you can't predict what will be MAC ID on your target system or uh, what is uh, going to be PCI slot uh, on your system because you are not on remote site, you can't see server. Second scenario, if you have hard coded uh, its numbers like its 0, its 1, its 2 in your scripts. So, with predictable naming, you are not sure what number you will get on uh, different servers. Numbers may be different according to BIOS or uh, different type of hardware. Third thing, if you are using some automation tool, let us say Ansible, and you want to maintain similar naming scheme across your fleet, so you want to stick to traditional naming scheme. Other thing which I have not listed here, uh, that is very useful. Uh, if you are using a traditional naming scheme, let us say you are in outage call and you are working with your colleague or your, your network team. So, you, you have to tell on which network interface they have to perform the configuration and let us say check IP or do TCP dump, etc, etc. So, if you have to tell, do it on ENX 78 E71 EA46 DA. So, that not make sense. If you have a simple naming scheme, it's 0, it's 1, that's easy. And uh, other thing, nowadays all the Linux, mostly 90% of Linux fleet is running on uh, virtual hardware. So, on virtual hardware, is, it is always good to have a simple naming scheme because uh, you, you don't have multiple interfaces like physical server have. So, in my opinion, if you are using a physical server and then if you want, you may stick to predictable naming scheme, uh, scheme 1 to 4, otherwise uh, use traditional naming scheme. Okay, friends, so now we will discuss how we can switch from predictable to traditional naming scheme. We have to do these simple 6 steps. We will modify grub by adding new entries, which will force traditional naming scheme to active. Then we will recompile group, simple reboot and uh, configure the interfaces. So friends, let us begin to technical session now. Okay, friends, so this is a console of my server. This is virtual server. I am logging in as root user. First, let me show you what hardware it is. If you see, this is VMware, this is virtual and uh, let us check interface names. If you see uh, one interface is loopback interface, avoid it, it will be always same. And uh, the first interface EN01677736, so that is a bit lengthy name, it is using a predictable naming scheme. I will switch it to traditional one. To do so, first thing I have to do, I have to add it grub configuration file, which is etc default grub. Here, 
in this particular entry cmd line underscore linux i will append it by adding net dot if names is equal to 0 and bios dev name is equal to 0 let's verify net dot if names is 0 ok that's fine then bios dev name bios dev name is 0 so what it mean uh, I'm forcing grep to use traditional network naming scheme ok friends this is done let me save this file ok this file is saved now I have to reconfigure or regenerate grub. Before do so, I will validate whether all the entries which I just recently modified this file, I want to check whether syntax is correct. So I can simply run mk grub to mk config without any option, enter. If there are some issues in my file, it will uh, tell me here. If you see this command, completed successfully because from logs I can see but I will run I will check exit code it's zero so this command uh, finished successfully so now I will uh, recompile the grub minus so here I will mention because at boot time grub2 this entry is read it grub2 slash grub dot cfg okay so if you see uh, this file is successfully updated now we have to take reboot I will simply do reboot so that's a virtual server it will reboot in a couple of seconds and I just want to show you whole uh, boot process I'm doing nothing I will I want to boot the server with default options because I already updated grub. Okay, friends, so my server is up. Let me log in. Sorry, I typed incorrect username. Okay. Okay, we are on server now. So let's check what are the network interfaces name. Okay, good. If you see now it's it's zero. So that's what we are looking for. Now we have to configure network interface file. So we will switch to etc sysconfig network scripts. Let's see what are the naming interfaces file are available. Right now, if you see only loopback interface file is there so we will create one new file vi if cfg dash it's zero this is it's zero first thing we have to add uh, what is the type of this device type is equal to ethernet okay now boot proto because i don't want to assign dscp ip i am setting it to none next thing what will be name what is the name of this device it's zero on boot is equal to yes i want this device to be available when system boot ip adder is ip address of this interface and what will be net mask okay so friends uh, I have to update uh, hardware address MAC address uh, that is must if you are uh, using traditional naming scheme because in uh, Red Hat or CentOS 7 the network service strictly read uh, hardware address or MAC address if you are not specifying hardware address in your file uh, then your system or network will not come up okay here I don't know what is the MAC address I will grab that I will show you how I can grab that I am just saving it so I am just doing if config minus a pipe grab ether pipe oak 
that is uh, field 2, let us check whether that is field 2 or not. If you see that is field 2, I am doing work on field 2. Okay, let us verify. Yep, this is the MAC address. I am just appending it to its 0 file. Let us modify that file again here. Where it got appended? It is not here. Is there something wrong which I did? Oh man, it's a uh, it's zero. Let me rm it's zero. Rm it's zero. Yes. So this data need to go to if cfg that it's zero. Okay. Let's modify this file. Okay, escape i adder is equal to. Okay, so configuration is done. I have added MAC ID of this device. Okay, so now we can uh, start our service. Service network. Okay, let me clear screen. We can easily check what are the errors. Service network stop. And now let's start service. Okay, I used uh, Red Hat six command, but this command still work on Red Hat seven. But if you want to do it, uh, same thing. Service started fine, but if you want to see system CTL system CTL restart network dot service I am just restarting service. So, you will be aware how we can start service or in Red Hat 7. If you noticed uh, even uh, service command used system CTL for restarting service. Okay, service restarted let us verify if IP address came on interface or not. Okay, if you see our configuration is done now. So, it is 0 got IP address let us ping any IP gateway IP. If you see it is able to uh, reach its gateway. So, that is it friend. Uh, this is how you can change uh, network naming schemes in uh, CentOS or Red Hat 7. If you have any question, you can post your question on my YouTube uh, video comment section. If you like this video, just hit like button. Thanks a lot. Keep watching my channel. Thanks. Bye.